keeps getting delayed. All right, so uh, thank you very much for uh, coming here to the show. And uh, thanks to the show organizers for inviting me again. And uh, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm a, actually a hobbyist. I've been a hobbyist for about 30 years. I uh, started keeping reefs back in 1991, 92, somewhere around there. And uh, been doing this for a long time. So I'm not involved in any fishy business. I'm a professor at Penn State, and I teach industrial engineering, all right? So I'm not even biology, right? So this is just a hobby of mine, and uh, I enjoy talking about it, sharing information that I've learned over the years, and hopefully get you to the point where you don't make the same mistakes that I did, right? So this time around, I'm going to talk about fish, right? And I'm going to talk about... All right, hopefully we won't get disturbed too much. All right, so I'm going to talk about fish. I'm going to talk about the, only talk about the fish that I have kept. All right, so I, I'm going to give you information that's all firsthand from me keeping those fish in my tanks. All right. Um, so right now I actually have a 500 gallon reef aquarium uh, that's been set up since uh, 2006. And it's, uh, I'll give you a, let's see. I, I don't know how it's going to work. Oh, yeah, there you go. So this is my tank currently, and this will give you, just give you an idea of the kind of fish that I have in there. All right. Um, so one of the things you'll see, I, I feed my fish a lot. Okay. Uh, that's one of the big keys to keeping fish very uh, happy and healthy, right? I have fish in here that I put into the tank when I set it up in 2006, right? So some of the fish in here have already been there for 16 years. And there's a few fish in there that I transferred from my old tank that I had for another 10 years. So there's fish in here that are about 26 years old, right? Um, So just to give you an idea of what fish I have in there, roughly about 65 fish in there, all right? And they are, a lot of these fish you're going to see, I keep multiples of the same fish, all right? So I have lots of squammy pinnace, I have some, lots of damsels in there, uh, multi-bar angels, uh, ballast angels, and a whole bunch of others. And I'll talk about these fish during the talk, all right? When I first started in the hobby, right, and you start setting up an aquarium, the advice I got was keep only one fish of, one, of a type, right? So don't put two, they'll fight, they'll kill each other, right? Which is not the best strategy if you want to really enjoy the fish, right? If you want to learn about the fish, learn, learn about their behavior, learn how they grow, learn how they pair up and how they have, uh, how they lay eggs, then that's a bad strategy if you just keep one, right? So when I first set up my tanks, I was always doing that. I was like, oh, I'll get one of these, one of these, one red one, one blue one, one, you know, green one and whatever. And that's how we kept them, right? So over these years, I've, I've changed my strategy now, right? I always want to keep multiples of any fish that I'm going to put in my tank, all right? And since I like a lot of fish, I kind of focus on the smaller fish because that way you can keep more, more fish, all right? Uh, other things that I like to do these days is that I would prefer to get aquaculture fish, right? Instead of getting them from the wild because you can get them as juveniles, and you can keep them for a much longer time because you know how old they are, roughly, right? Um, so I like to get juveniles, if possible, of any fish because once again, you can see the development of that fish 
as it goes. A lot of fish go through changes as they grow. The juveniles sometimes look very different from what the adults look like. Right? And you get a chance to experience and see all those changes. Right? Uh, when you get fish, one of the things I like to tell people is quarantine your fish. No matter where you get it from, ideally you should be quarantining the fish because if you have a tank like mine with 65 fish and one fish with a disease gets in there, it could wipe out pretty much all my fish. Right? So that's, that's a big risk. So once you get to the point where you have expensive fish in your tank, adding new fish, you have to be really very careful. The other thing with keeping fish is it's nice to provide them with a lot of hiding spaces. Right? Fish feel more comfortable if they have a little home that they can go to and sleep at night. Right? I've noticed that with my fish that every night they kind of sleep in the same place. Right? And they feel more comfortable if there's lots of places to hide. So if somebody's chasing them or there's a fight, they know they can go and hide somewhere and be safe. Right? Um, and the other thing I like to do with my fish is I like fish that occupy different areas in my aquarium. Right? So some fish like to stay in the bottom. Some fish are more free swimming and they'll swim everywhere. Some fish I have in there that I don't even know if they're alive or not because they like to hide most of the time. Right? But they occupy different places in the aquarium. And that's kind of neat because you just don't have the same kind of fish and they're all swimming around outside. So smaller fish, different niches that they occupy in the aquarium makes the aquariums a lot more interesting. Right? So let's talk about the fish itself, the fish themselves, and just give you a little bit about knowledge about these fish. Right? So the first fish I like to always put in, and one of my rules with fish is, if a fish can do something good for my tank, then I want to put that fish in my tank. Right? And tang, the whole family of tangs is a very it's an excellent group of fish because they are herbivores. They like to eat algae all the time. And they like to keep picking on algae. Right? So putting in tangs is always a good strategy. Right? And again, the number of tangs you can put in in an aquarium is going to depend on the size of your aquarium. Right? So in my 500-gallon tank, I have a naso tang, I have a hippo tang, I have a Achilles tang. The problem with some of these tangs is even for a tank my size, I can't put multiples of these fish. Okay? I have two yellow tangs, and that's about as far as I got with putting multiples of, of uh, tangs. Putting two Achilles in a 500-gallon tank, that would be a mistake. Okay? They, they would be fighting. Blonde naso, I have one in my tank, but it's, they get large, right? And I don't really like large fish, but that was an exception, right? And the other thing with these tanks is that they all eat different types of algae. So that's another nice thing, right? Like the naso tanks love to pick on some of the brown algae that grows. Um, the other tanks will pick on other green algae um, and so on, right? So tanks is a good group of fish to put in there. A whole bunch of different ones you can get. And uh, I, Right now in my tank, I have the purple tank. I have two yellow tanks and one zebra tank. Right? Now if you have a tank like Joe's, you could put multiples of these and get away with it. Right? Uh, if you have a 20-gallon tank, maybe you only put one of these in there. Right? So again, with the tanks, you can find all sorts of colors all sorts of different uh, body shapes. You can find fish with different mouths. So that tells you that they eat different kinds of algae. All right. So these are some of the tanks that I currently have in my tank. All right. The next group of fish that talk a little bit about, I, and I like these a lot, is the pygmy angels. So these are currently the pygmy angels in my tank, except for the joculators, which actually ended up dying. So I don't have those anymore. But I have the shepardi, the multibar, um, the golden angel. Right? So these are some of the ones that I have in my tank. The nice thing about these fish is they're small. 
right? They don't get too big. You can pair them up easily, right? If you get one larger one and a smaller one, they will generally, the smaller one will be the female and the bigger one will be the male, right? So they're easy to pair up. And especially if you get them as juveniles, or, or the, it's much easier, okay? So I have a pair of Shepardis in there, I have a pair of uh, multibars in my tank, and a pair of Goldens. The Goldens, I never see. Okay. They are very cryptic fish, they like to hide, and once in a while I'll see them, especially at night when they come out to spawn, is when I usually see them. Right. People, don't, people will recommend that these fish shouldn't be kept in, in aquariums because they'll pick on your corals. All right. They don't really kill corals, right? They might nip here and there on the coral, but when you have a large enough tank, they don't really cause any damage. And I've seen that even in small tanks, these fish will not cause too much damage, all right? So if you have an opportunity, get two of these, and every night you're going to see them spawning. Once they get mature, you'll see that, all right? Um, So these centropyges, they tend to, again, have different habits compared to other angelfish. They like to stay near the rocks. They don't really like to swim out in the open too much, right? But the Jennycanthus species, they are more open water swimmers, right? So they'll swim around in your tank and everywhere. You'll see them in the open water. Unlike the other angelfish, where you really can't tell the male and fe females apart, in the Jennycanthus species, the males and the females are very different. All right. So on the left-hand side, you see the Watanabe angels, and the bottom one is the female, and the top one is the male. All right. So once again, what I did was I got three small females. All right. And the nice thing about getting smaller females is that they're cheaper, right? And if you get three females, eventually one of them will turn into a male, right? So that's a very easy way to make pairs of fish, especially when they switch sex, right? The ones on the right is the Bellus angel, and again, you can see how different the male and the female are. The male is the one with the yellow stripe on it, and then the females have the blue, black, and other shades of color, right? The same thing. I ended up buying three females, and within a year, one of them turned into a male, right? So having these, and I, you can actually keep these in trees also, in trios, right? I, I used to have a trio of the Ballas Angels for a long time, and the male eventually died, and within two weeks, one of the females switched to a male, right? But when the, I had the trio, the male would spawn every night with both the females, all right? So that's kind of neat to watch, right? So you see, you see the courting behavior, you see how they behave uh, when they are females around, how does the male behave? You can't do that if you just keep one of every fish, all right? Other angelfish that I've kept, the regal tang. I had a pair of the regal tangs. I liked them a lot, but they ate all my zoanthids. All right? So I came back from a trip one time, and I had all these fancy zoanthids that I had collected, and they were all gone. They left all the brown ones, okay? So you have to be careful with, with fish, right? Fish might eat some of your corals, right? So you have to know what the likelihood of that fish eating the coral is. And if you like the fish more than the coral, then you just give up on the coral and say, I'll keep the fish, all right? So that's the choice sometimes you have to make with fish, that when you have fish that you really like, then you may have to adjust the kind of corals that you can keep in your tank, right? So now I only have brown zoanthids in my tank. Uh, banded angels, now they've become impossible to find and get because you can't collect them in Hawaii, they come from Hawaii. 
Same thing, I bought, I got us two juveniles and they also turn into one male and one female, right? So these are, that's a nice group of fish to keep. Um, again, depending on the size of your tank, the pygmy angels are, are nicer because you can keep them in smaller tanks, right? They might nip on clams here and there, but they don't really eat the clams. The other group of fish is the butterfly fish, all right? Um, I like to keep butterfly fish, especially the copper band or the marginalis. The one on the left is the marginalis and the one on the right is the copper band. Because I use them to control aptasia. All right? So most of us who have kept reefs at some point or the other are fighting with aptasia. All right? And my way of controlling them is to get fish that are going to be able to keep the aptasia under control. Right? So the one on the left is the, uh, the marginalis, which comes from Australia. Not very easy to find these fish, but if you find them, they're awesome fish. Right? It didn't eat anything other than the aptasia, but it eats all the food that I was throwing in the tank. So that, that's a good thing, too. Um, the copper bands, they're nice, but it's hard to come by a healthy specimen of quarter of copper bands. Um, I usually have to go through three or four before I can get one to live. So that's not a good uh, ratio there. Um, it's all, it all depends on how they're collected. Right? And uh, the way a lot of these fish, they're collected in third world countries, they're shipped over, they don't feed them properly while they're holding these fish. And by the time you get them, they're already starving, and it's very hard to get them to start eating again. Right? So those are the only, only butterfly fish I have thrown into my tank, right? and they have both been excellent citizens, I should, I should say. Right? Damsels, this is a controversial fish. Right? A lot of people do not recommend putting damsels in your tank because they might get territorial, right? But to me, that's a pretty sweeping statement. There are lots of damsels out there that are fairly well behaved, right? If they fight and squabble, they fight among themselves. So once again, when you keep a group of them, they'll just hang around and fight with each other and claim their territories and push each other out of the way. And they don't bother the other fish, right? Especially these, the, the, these Rolandis, they are incredible. They're not aggressive at all to other fish. And they live long. I've had the, the I have a group of about five or six left now. And they like to hide in caves. They'll actually go under the rock, digging up the sand to make a cave for themselves. And they lay eggs in the caves. Right? So, and they'll spawn pretty much every day, you know. Um, they like to stay towards the bottom of the tank, right? So you can put damsels in there now. They like to stay and roam around the top of the tank. And I love these Kupang damsels or whatever they're called, uh, different names. Uh, but this half black and yellow one, they don't get bigger than one and a half inch, right? And so I have several of these in the tank, and they, again, hang around among themselves, and they keep you know, chasing each other around, but they don't bother the other fish. Right? And if you have a 20-gallon tank, putting damsels may not be the best strategy, because they do get territorial. And if you put the wrong damsels in there, they can get really mean. Right? So I found that these small ones are the ones that behave well, and you can actually keep several of them in your tanks. Right? So these are some of the other ones that I have in, the, in my tank. The Talbots is another one that stays small. You know? uh, the Spring Arise, same way, they stay small. Some people claim the Spring Arise will eat flatworms. I haven't seen them do that in my tanks, but there are claims out there that they will. Right? Grammas, they're another great group of fish to keep in your tank, all right? And you can, again, keep these in groups. 
Right? So there's a royal grammar, you can get four or five and throw them in your tank and they'll, they'll be fine. Right? Um, right now I have a trio of the black cap basilets. And again, the same thing, I get them as small as, and the big ones become the male and the smaller ones stay the females. Right? The grammars are kind of neat fish because they'll actually build a nest. So I've seen my black cap basslet pick up pieces of branches of dead coral, move them over to a corner, and make a little nest for itself. And I've seen the male and the female go into that nest. Right? Um, the one on the right is the Cuban basslet. Right? That's an expensive one. Right? That's not the the royal grammars were relatively cheap. The black cap basslets are in the middle price range. And then you get to the Cuban basslet. I think when they first started but breeding them and selling them, they were like three thousand dollars a piece. These days you can get them for about six hundred. Right? But that's a still expensive fish. Right? But the nice thing is that they're being captive bred. So you can get these aquacultured, right? Other fish that I have in my tank, uh, I have the orange spot file fish, right? Most people would recommend not putting those fish in your tank because they supposedly eat coral, right? I have a pair of these in my tank and I don't think they've damaged any of my coral. They keep nipping here and there on the coral, but they really haven't, they don't eat the coral completely, right? So the only downside is if you have Acropora, you're not going to see the polyp extension that a lot of people like to see in their, in their acros, right? So I don't see any polyp extension because these fish will come and just nip at the polyps here and there, right? So again, I have a male and a female, and they haven't really damaged anything in the tank. Right? The other file fish I've used occasionally to control Aptasia is the Aptasia eating file fish. Right? This fish, it's iffy if whether it's going to eat the Aptasia or not. Sometimes you get a fish that'll eat them, and sometimes you get one that won't eat them. Right? The downside in my experience with these fish has been that once they eat the aptasia, they don't stop. They want to eat something else. So I had them with the leather corals, and they took bites of the leather coral all the time. All right? So fish can turn rogue, and they'll do things that they're not really supposed to be doing in your tank, but they'll do it. Like tangs, for example. I've seen a tank where the tangs would just rip any LPS moment my friend would put them in there, the tanks would just come and shred it, all right? They don't do that in my tank, all right? So sometimes you can't really predict what the fish is going to do, all right? So always I tell people, always have a plan to remove the fish from the tank before you put it in, all right? How am I going to get this fish out if it turns rogue? So when I put these uh, orange spot file fish in, people told me, well, you're going to kill all your acros, they're going to eat everything, all right? And I said, well, I know, I know how to get them out because at night, they sleep again in the same place. They sleep in the branches of this one acro, all right? And I know I can catch them at night when they're sleeping, all right? So having a plan to remove the fish is important, all right? A lot of the other fish, like the tangs and so, uh, the other larger fish, to get them out of the tank, use a trap. I've been using traps. And, but it takes a while to get the fish to go into the trap. And more often than not, it's all the other fish that you don't want to catch are the ones that are going, going to go into the trap. All right? So. Another group of fish that I really like is the antheas. Right? Every time I've gone diving somewhere, there's always groups of antheas out there. So I wanted to recreate that in my own tank. And based on my past experiences, I found that the squamy pinus antheas are one of the better ones 
to keep. They eat well. Um, they're not aggressive to each other, all right? And you can keep them in large groups. Right? Again, the, the male and the females are very different. So the one on the bottom corner is the male. The one on the top is the female. And once again, I only buy female fish because one of the larger females is going to turn into a male. Right? One of the downsides of keeping antheas is that they, eventually all females are going to turn into males. Right? And as soon as the second female turns into a male, the two males will fight, even in a 500-gallon tank, and then one of the males gets chased away and stresses out and disappears. All right? So I just get 15 of these or you know, more than that, and I just throw all the females in, and eventually I start losing a few here and there once they turn into males. All right? So that's, that's the downside of this. The good thing about Swami penis is that they don't turn to males as quickly as some of the other antheas. One time I put a school of dispar antheas in there, and I can't believe how fast those were turning into males. All right? And within less than a year, I pretty much lost that whole school. Right? So this current school of the Swami penis, I've had these for three years now, and every maybe a year or so, one turns into a male, and then the second one turns into a male a little bit later, and then they'll fight, and they'll be left with one male. Right? Sometimes you'll find that this other antheas gets mixed in with the uh, Swami penis. Right? So this Tyriopolis antheas, which looks, when they're young, they look identical. The females all look the same, but the male is very different from the actual male of the uh, Swami penis. But they spawn. They spawn every night. And even though this Tyriopolis is a slightly different species, it still spawns with the females of the uh, Swami penis. Right? So it's again a very interesting because they'll spawn with multiple females at night. Right? The Midas Blenny, they are again very interesting fish because they kind of look like antheas elongated antheas, and they love to hang around with the antheas. That's how they are in the wild. So I have a pair of Midas blennies that just hangs around with the group of antheas that I have in there. Right? And again, you get a diverse variety of antheas. Um, I tried keeping the randals. I wasn't too successful with it. Okay, so I kind of have given up on those. Ventralis, these are really beautiful antheas, right? But again, the problem with them is you can't get good, healthy ones, right? So I, I got lucky one time. Uh, it's good to know people in the fish business. And uh, Live Aquaria had several of these that were in pretty good shape. So several of my friends, we got in, we, we got these fish. And I've had these now for four years. And they're still doing great. Usually, they don't. They're very shy fish. You can't put them in a tank with other fish where there's a lot of hustle bustle. They'll never come out. They'll stay hidden. So I have them in a separate tank where it's very peaceful and these fish can relax and chill out and feel comfortable, right? So the whole goal is to make the fish feel comfortable and feel comfortable and feel at home, right? Another group of fish that are very common in aquariums and beautiful fish, you can get them in a wide range of colors and patterns, is the wrasses. And again, the wrasses is the same thing. You'll find very di large differences between the males and the females. Right? So the one on the right here is the femininous wrasse. And you can see the one on the top is the female, and the one on the bottom is the male. Right? So I did get a trio of females at one time, and I put them in my tank. For a year, they were all fine. They got along, and then something happened. I think one of them decided that it was going to turn into a male, but decided it wasn't going to tolerate the other fish. Right? And 
basically one of them killed the other two fish and never fully turned into a male either. So <laughs> Another fish that I really like is the redhead, ra redhead wrasse. That's the whole uh, Halicorus species. There's some beautiful fish in that family of, fi of uh, wrasses. The redhead is nice and green with beautiful red hair, right? I've never seen a female of this species. I've tried to get females of this, but never really seen them at all. So they don't even probably show up in the hobby, right? Males occasionally, you'll see them sometimes, but they're not very common. You don't see them that frequently, right? So as I said, I mean, the fish transition, right? So I like to get juveniles. Juveniles will go through a transition from male to a female, and a lot of fish, that change is very dramatic, right? So this is the bipartis wrasse. I have a trio of these. Again, I got three females, and one of them turned to a male. So you can see what the difference is between the male and the female, right? So if you just keep one of each type, you're never going to see these, this uh, transformation, right? So this was my Lenardi Ras that I had for several years. I got there as a juvenile. As the bottom left is what it looks like as a juvenile. It's black with a little bit of yellow in there, all right? And as that fish grew, it turned into a female. The female has nice blue and gold stripes, all right? It stayed female for about five, six years. And then one time I came back from a trip and I'm like, what happened to my female Lenardi? Right? It switched into a male. Right? And the male, again, you can see looks very different from what the female looks like. Right? So this is what you miss out. If you just get adult fish, get them when they're already males. Right? And usually with all these fish, once they turn into males, they don't live too much longer after that. All right? That's like the terminal phase. So when you get these fish and you get them as terminal phase males because they look so gorgeous, be prepared that they won't live too long after that. Right? So if you want the fish to live long in your tank, get them as juveniles and grow them out. And watch them change. Right? And all wrasses will do that. Right? These are some of the wrasses that I've kept over the years. Problem with these wrasses is that they like to jump. Right? The Halicorus, they don't jump as much. The Lenardis, they didn't jump that much. But these, the Zerabla species, they are incredible. Right? You cannot keep them in a, reef, in a tank without a cover. You'll find them on the floor. And even if you have a cover, if, even if there's a small opening, sometime, somehow they find it. Okay? And there have been many a time where I've come home and found the fish sitting on my netting. I went through, especially when they're spawning and displaying, right? They can move really fast. And they just shoot straight out of the water, right? And in this case, this one went through my net and couldn't, of course, get back into the tank, right? So you'll see that. You have to be very careful. I always suggest people have tanks, if you're keeping these wrasses, to have a cover on your tank. Right? So, so the males are always awesome with these fish. Right? They're always out there. And when they are flashing and courting, you see incredible colors on these fish. And you're not going to see that if you just have only one male. Okay? So it's better to get some females. Other cool fish, the hawkfish. I love these fish, all right? The flame hawk, especially. Uh, they're also a very fairly long-lived fish. When I first set up my tank, I put two of them in there. Again, my same strategy of getting a big one and a smaller one. And after 16 years, I still have both of those, all right? So they will live as pairs. Same thing with the long-nosed hawkfish. They'll live as pairs. And easy to, to get them to pair up. Uh, dragonets, they're another cool fish, right? 
they're not free swimmers. They're not going to swim around the whole tank. They just kind of move around the floor of your tanks, stay low. They're constantly picking on things. Um, and again, if you have a male and a female, they'll spawn. Okay? So there's the red scooter blenny, blennies going through their spawning at night. Right? So one of the things that I like to do, since this fish like to spawn when it starts to get dark, right? I arrange my lighting schedule in such a way that they don't go on to off, right? I gradually start dropping the intensity of the light right, over an hour, and different fish will spawn at different times during that thing. So the really shy fish, like the mandarins, they almost wait till the light is completely off, almost completely off before they'll spawn. Right? And the antheas, I mean, they're the first ones to go. Right? As soon as it starts getting dim, the, an the male antheas is getting ready. Right? Again, with the dragonets, it's hard to get them to eat, but when you have a large enough tank, that makes it a lot easier. Right? But again, you can get these captive bred, and the captive ones will actually eat pellet foods. So that makes it a lot easier to keep. Right. Assessors, another beautiful fish, but it's going to be a cryptic fish. Right? These fish like to live in caves. They like to hang upside down in caves. Right? And the nice thing about these, these fish is that ORA is breeding these. You can get these. And I have a school of four of these in my tank. And I hardly see them in the day. Right? Once in a while, when you throw food in there, they might pop their head out, quickly grab some food, and go right back in. Right? But it's nice to have fish that, again, occupy all the different zones in your tank. And it's nice to have surprises once in a while. Oh, that fish is still alive. You know? And of course, clownfish. Right? That's a great fish to keep. But again, you can't keep multiple pairs of clownfish, even in a large tank. They will fight. They'll They'll chase away the other pair if you have two pairs. Sometimes you might get lucky and they might coexist, but mostly in small tanks, they will fight. And again, I don't like the large clownfish. They get too aggressive, they get mean. So I just stick with the perculas and the oscillaris. Right? Wow. I enjoy breeding them too. That's the nice thing about it, at least the clownfish, that people like me can even breed them. Right? They don't re really require a lot of effort in trying to raise copepods and other things to feed them. You can do them with rotifers, and that makes it easier for most people to do. Right? Unlike all the other fish, the clownfish are different. Right? The, they're all males when they're young. And the largest male will turn into a female. Right? But most of the other fish, it's the females that will turn into males. Right? But the clownfish, it's the male that will turn into a female. Right? So that makes it, again, easier to pair up. Right? And then there are some really rare, expensive fish that I only kept the clarion for a while. Um, I got them as a juvenile. It kind of grew up into these kind of colors. The male is I mean, the, the adult coloration is different again, right? And then it got to a point where it decided once again to eat palitoa in my tank, and it dropped dead after doing that, right? So, expensive fish. That was a loss, <laughs> big loss. Right? And then there are fish that, even, that are way beyond uh, people like me and you and others. They're too expensive, right? Uh, they're pretty fish, but outside most people's price range, right? And the peppermint angels, the one on the right, I think the last time they were being sold, and they, they were going for about $20,000 a piece, right? I don't know what the personatus are going for, but they are also several thousand dollars of fish. So just to finish my talk, I mean, just I'll round up with the most important things here. If you're going to keep fish, 
make sure you quarantine them, quarantine them and treat them, and make sure they're, they are healthy before you put them in your tank, right? You already have 15, 20 fish in your tank, one diseased fish is going to cause a lot of damage. All right, folks, on the main stage, Paul Paschel from Aquamoon is going to be giving a talk on the Flugel main stage in the back of the auditorium behind the raffle area, 2 p.m. is our next key speaker. Feed the fish well, right? If you want the fish to spawn, you want them to grow, you really have to feed the fish, right? I see a lot of hobbyists where they starve the fish because they're afraid to get their nutrient levels will go up if they feed the fish. Right? But the fish are not going to stay healthy if you don't feed them well. And sometimes you have to feed them multiple times a day, depending on the kind of fish you have. And also, feed them a wide range of foods. One of the things I like to do is to get my fish to start eating pellets. Right? So once they start eating pellets, then it makes it easy to go on a vacation, go on a trip, because you can put an automatic feeder and feed the fish while you're gone. Right? So that getting that transition away from frozen foods to get them to eat pellet foods not, is, is, is very useful. Right? Once you have fish eating pellets and you add new fish to the tank, the new fish learn very quickly what pellets are. Right? So they, they're like monkey see, monkey do, and they start eating the pellets quicker. So, screen your tanks, always put a cover on there. A lot of these fish can jump. Even fish you might think will not jump, will actually jump, right? I remember coming home from work one day and I found my hippo tank on the floor. This was before, I said, eh, tanks are not gonna jump, you know? And found this hippo tank laying on the floor. Stiff, I took it and I was going to chuck it away. And I don't know what came over me, and I said, nah, I'm not going to chuck it out. I'm just going to go put it back in my tank, you know? And maybe the starfish will eat it, or something will eat it, and put it back in there. I put it in there. The poor fish obviously was looked at. It kept floating around and ended up getting stuck to the intake of my pump, right? I peeled him off of there. Stripes all over his body from being sucked into that pump. I still left him in the tank, right? Three days later, I'm feeding my tank, and I see this fish that's not even blue anymore. It was a blue hippo tank. Some weird coloration on his body. Could barely swim, had no fins, was trying to eat the food. Now, I couldn't believe that fish actually survived, you know? And I still have it today. <laughs> So after 16 years, it's still alive. You, if you look at it, you can't even tell any scars on his body from being almost dead, you know? So screening the tank is really important. Any fish you think is not gonna jump is going to jump, right? The more expensive the fish, the more chances that it's gonna jump. Right? And if it's a wrasse, it'll find the smallest hole in your screen and try to get out of there, so. The other thing I've learned over the years is I avoid sea cucumbers now, okay? I've had two instances where I had unexplained death of large numbers of fish, all right? Came, you look at the tank at night, every, all the fish are doing great, came back in the morning and fish are dead, you know? I'm like, what happened? So the first time around, we figured out it was the palitoa that did that, right? Because I was messing with the tank, I'd agitated these palitoas because I was trying to remove them from the tank, and they got upset, released their palitoxins, and the next morning, the fish were dead, right? But it took me a long time to figure that out because we actually ended up repeating that experiment <laughs> accidentally because my friend then said, don't throw that rock away, right? I'll put it in my tank. I don't care about palitoas. Sure. He took it, put it in his tank. Next day, all his fish were dead. <laughs> That's how we figured out that it was the palitoa killing the fish, right? The sec one other incident that happened was 
Same thing, fish were fine at night, in the morning they were dying or dead, right? That tank had no palithoa in there, it had no zoanthids, there were none of this stuff in there. So I started looking, what happened here? Why would the fish die? Why would the fish die? I had the sea cucumber that was wrapped around the vortex pump. It was sucked into the pump and all his guts were spewed out and that's what killed the fish. Right? And this is a sea cucumber that I had for five, six years in the tank and nothing happened. But one day it decided to get into the intake of the pump and that killed the fish. So I don't want to see sea cucumbers in my tank at all anymore. All right? Um, so I'm going to stop here, uh, get us back on time, and I'll take any questions you might have. Yeah. I have a machine that feeds the fish. Yeah. I wish I had a robot that would do it. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, so sometimes, yeah, 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 that's what happens sometimes. It's, it's surprising. Because I usually have this bad habit of, I keep small fish, so it's easy to do. When they die, if I can, if I can get them out, I usually end up flushing them down the toilet. But, you know. So when I did that with the hippo tang, and I actually threw him in the toilet, and I thought that I saw a fin move. I mean, the gills move, the gill cover. I, I wasn't sure, but I still said, eh, you know, it's worth a chance. Grabbed it, put it back in the, put it in the tank. No. So. Yeah. Oh, never mind. It's too hard for me, right? <laughs> That's the pair of karamabi that I used to have. One of them died now, so I only, I'm left with one. But uh, that's another awesome fish. Really love the coloration on that fish. Yeah. No, I would add the smaller one. Yeah, I let the, the, the bigger one become the male. It's much easier to make that transition because you add a bigger one, you don't know whether yours was a male or a female, right? So it's always, I always like to add the smaller one. Yeah. That way they can sort it out. Because I've seen that, but when you add a bigger one, it's a new fish. It's coming into a tank where other fish are all settled in, and they beat the crap out of it. You know. So yeah, so that's another thing that you know, adding new fish into an established tank is always a challenge. So use an acclimat uh, box, all right. Let the fish see each other for a while. Let them kind of get used to each other, all right? And uh, put them in. The other thing I like to do is, again, with the, in the quarantine system, I like to toughen up the fish, right? Get them eating the foods I, I feed them. Get them to put on some weight. And then I, when I put them in my tank, I know they're going to take a beating. They always will take a beating from other fish. So if they're strong enough to withstand the beating, then they'll survive. Okay, so putting in a fish directly from the store into the tank usually doesn't work as well when you have established fish in the tank. Right? Fish are very territorial. Every fish is territorial. You know. Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop here. I'll be around for another half an hour or so.